In the legal world, we have a doctrine called the fruit of the poisonous tree. And that doctrine says this, if you have a tree and that tree is poisonous, then the only type of fruit it can produce is poison fruit. A poison tree will produce nothing but poison. Now, attorneys typically use this doctrine to get ill-gotten evidence thrown out of court. But I think this is the perfect diagram to help us understand toxic masculinity. Let's call it the toxic masculina tree. And if we can understand how the toxic masculinity tree grows, then we can understand how toxic masculinity is created. So what do we need to grow a tree? Well, the first thing we need is sunlight. A tree needs sunlight to grow. And for the toxic masculinity tree, that sunlight is dominion, the control over another person. And if we look at the pieces of fruit that the toxic masculinity tree produces, we see dominion all around. Domestic violence is the control over an intimate partner through the use of mental, physical, and emotional weapons. Racism, the idea that one race is dominant over another. Homophobia and transphobia, the idea that somehow cis people are dominant over members of the LGBTQ plus community. And of course, sexual assault, the control over another person through the use of sex. If you look at the fruit of the toxic masculine tree, you will see dominion reflecting off every single piece. So we have our sunlight. Well, what else do we need? Well, we need soil, right? Yes, we need soil, rich in nutrients, so that tree can get its roots and dig in there and, and really get strong. And for the toxic masculine tree, that soil is entitlement. The idea that men are owed something all because of our penis. If you want a good look at entitlement at work, look at the incel community. Incel, which is short for the phrase involuntarily celibate, found its roots in 1993 when a young Canadian woman named Elena went to university. Elena got to school and she looked around and she noticed that all of her friends were in relationships, but she wasn't. So she created an online community for herself and people like her that were unlucky in romance. An online community where people, people could come together, they could show each other support, love, and they could work with each other. Over time, Elena would discover her own sexuality and when she did, she would move on and get that relationship she was looking for. But when Elena left her in-cell community, well, that's when entitlement seeped in. Now, if you find yourself into, in an incel community, you are in a corner of the internet filled with frustration, anger, and hatred, all directed at women for having the audacity not to meet the entitlement expectation of men. But it's not just online. Some of these ideals are coming into the real world. In 2016, Elliot Rogers took his entitlement ideals offline and into California, going on a shooting and stabbing spree that would claim the lives of six people. Entitlement, it can be dangerous and it can also be deadly. So we know the elements that we need for the toxic masculinity tree, but who is planting the seed in the first place? And once that tree starts to grow, who's pruning the bush? Well, toxic masculinity and toxic masculine behavior is generational. 
passed down from elders to younger generations in a toxic cycle that never ends. Dan Turner had the opportunity to go before the court and testify on behalf of his son who had been convicted of several counts of sexual assault. He went on on the stand, he looked at the judge and he said, judge, it would be a shame for my son's life to be ruined over 20 minutes of action. 20 minutes of action. Sexual assault boiled down to 20 minutes of action. If that is how Dan Turner, the father, looks at sexual assault, then it is no surprise that Brock Turner, the son, would have sexual assault in his masculinity profile. But it doesn't just stop at families. We see this in organizations as well. My alma mater has the distinction of being the very first university to have a national basketball championship revoked. What'd they do? Well, someone on the senior administration staff thought it would be a good idea to hire escorts to help recruit players to the team. And they'd bring these escorts on campus into the basketball dorm, and these escorts, they would strip for recruits and even have sex with them. The recruits had no problem taking part in this because after all, this was an environment that was created by an elder member of the program. And it's these elder members that use a system of punishment and reward in order to get the desired behavior. If a young man or a, or a boy goes along with the desired behavior, they're heaped with praise. Hey, man, hey, good job. Yo, I saw you. Dude, you are epic. Epic, I like that compliment. That's an awesome compliment. I want to be epic. But this is the praise that is heaped upon this, this type of behavior. On the other side, if someone has the audacity to buck the trend and do what they know is right, where they're met with ridicule. Dude, come on, you are so lame. Why you gotta be a goofy for? My guy, stop being such a pussy. And it's this ridicule that leads boys and young men to do behavior that they know they shouldn't be doing. Because as the saying goes, Inclusion is a hell of a drug. So now we understand how the toxic masculinity grows, the elements that we need, who's planting the seed. Why do we get rid of a toxic masculinity tree? Well, same way you get rid of a regular tree. You chop it down. I'm to the age in my life where home improvement is my jam. It brings me joy. I love going to the hardware store. If I get to go to the hardware store, it's a good day. If I gotta go twice, well, that's a great day. And recently, I I looked in my front yard and we had this old tree out there and the tree is always dropping branches in the yard. And and I'm looking at this tree and I'm thinking, huh, you know, if I could chop those branches up somehow, I would have a lot of free wood for uh, for my fire pit out back. So I go to the hardware store and I get myself a hatchet, just a little thing, probably about that big. I come home. And I I go in the yard and I pull a branch right out into the middle of the yard. See, I wanted it in the middle because I wanted the entire neighborhood to see this. I was gonna let them know, hey, there is a real man that lives at this house, a real wood chopping man. (laughs) Had my tank top on, got the gun showing. And and, and in my mind, I'm gonna take this hatchet and I'm gonna come down like Thor's hammer and in one swipe, I'm gonna break through this piece of wood. So, so, so I, I, I come back and I bring that thing down and uh, half inch. See, for those of you who have actually cut wood before, you know that that's not how it goes. It's a process. And I learned real quick about that process. So here I am outside, I'm, I'm, I'm hacking away, I'm chopping, I'm stanking and sweating, sweating and stanking. My daughter's over here looking at me like, oh my gosh, this is my dad. And 
finally and mercifully, my across the street neighbor comes over with an ax and he says, dude, it's getting sad. Let me help. And then together we were able to chop up that wood and, and we had a nice uh, bonfire that night. But that's the exact same way we need to go about chopping down the toxic masculinity. Can you do it yourself? Sure, you can try. But what's gonna happen? You're gonna get tired, you're gonna get frustrated, sweaty, you may even quit. But if you can reach out and find a neighbor or a friend or a fraternity brother or a teammate or a coworker or a classmate that could come and help you chop, the process is gonna go much easier. And men all around the country are starting to get it. The men's basketball team at Williamette University, they pick up the acts of education and they teach healthy masculine behavior with the same priority that they teach a jump shot. The fraternities at UC Poly are picking up the acts of action and each year they host a Healthy Masculinity Week, seven days full of lectures, workshops, and community service. And websites like Woke Daddy are pulling men from all across the globe, picking up the acts of networking and having important discussions on modern masculinity, what it is and what it has the capability to be. So this is my call to action for all you fellas out there that can hear my voice. Identify the toxic masculinity trees where you're at. And once you have them identified, go in your shed, get your ax, call a friend, and start chopping. Because if you do, you won't be able to knock those toxic masculinity trees down. And when they're knocked down, the ground will be ripe for a brand new tree a healthy masculine tree that will bear the fruit of compassion, respect, and consent. And that, my friends, is fruit that we can all enjoy. Thank you.